everyone and welcome to Already Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Tara, and we are going to talk about The Twilight Zone, Season 2, Episode 5. It's called The Howling Man. So, full spoilers for the episode, as always. So this episode features a man by the name of Ellington? Am I remembering that right? I am. Ellington. Mm -hmm. And he is lost. He's in Europe. It's, it's about five years after World War One. And it's this rainy and stormy, and he's, he's he's struggling with the elements, and he's banging on this door for help, uh, a monastery of some sort, and this uh, wizard lets him in, uh, reluctantly, might I add. He didn't really. He's like, no, no, we don't accept visitors. But I'm not a visitor. I'm I'm, I'm dying. And I'm in for help. I'm, I feel ill from the from the elements. And he reluctantly lets him in, and he speaks to Brother Jerome, who's the, the leader of this whole little shebang. Uh, and he's like, no, you can't stay here, you have to go, you have to go. Uh, but he collapses before he can leave. And when he wakes up, he meets someone who is locked in a cellar sort of door, uh, who is a prisoner in this place. And he's like, hey, now they did lock me in here because I was kissing someone and they're, they're, they're crazy, it's a crazy cult and you have to let me out. But of course, the premise of this episode is really that once this happens, the leader, Jerome, tells Ellington that the person they have trapped in the cell is the devil himself and if they let him out uh, all hell will break loose and the reason why there's been no world wars for five years <laughs> is because we've had him trapped here <laughs> that's why things have been nice and peaceful for the last five years uh so i'll leave it there for now uh but that is the gist of the episode and ultimately ellington has to decide who he believes and what he's going to do and yada 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 so tara did you enjoy the howling man I did not as much for the premise, but I just enjoyed like all the set pieces and it was a very weird episode. I thought <laughs> just the way it looked and it was like watching a universal monster movie from the thirties or something, but it was, it was interesting. Acting was good, but the, the premise is okay. I think I, I, I like the, the, the dilemma part of the premise right the idea of like okay you've got this person prisoner he looks like he needs help and you're you're keeping him here you know unjustly but then they say no he's actually the devil and it becomes that like who do you believe that part of it i like yeah uh, the actual way all these guys look uh they're all walking about with the big shepherd sticks and they've all got the beards <laughs> like, they all look like moses it felt a bit goofy to me like it felt a little bit like okay we're play acting because we have this type of look and set and uh, mm -hmm. so that that part took me out of it a little bit early on but the actual core idea of it uh, I, I think is solid and obviously the ending's pretty fun <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I'll say that much uh, and we should mention as well that this story's actually been not only obviously is it narrated by Rod Serling at the start and the end as it always is but it's actually kind of uh, bookended by the main character Ellington as well like, uh, further in the future presumably present day which does m give me a lot of questions about ages uh, when when that comes up but because uh, mm -hmm. it starts off with him saying oh you're never going to believe this story and I was like this is weird it's usually Rod Selling who introduces the episode why, why is the main character doing it uh, yeah extre extreme <laughs> Dutch right. angle as well on his face he's like you know he's like you're never going to believe this you're never going to believe this yeah, I thought the Dutch angle thing was pretty cool too in the beginning, uh, when he first gets to that monastery or whatever it is, and he's wandering around and he feels ill. And the way that the Dutch angle, like when mm. the camera turns, it kind of does this like leaning thing to it, so that when he passes out, it's a bit like he we were watching him be dizzy through his eyes almost by um, it, <clears throat> just with the camera. It was really I thought that was kind of cool it emulates his headspace yeah when he's walking around mm -hmm. no it does the, like there's a lot of dutch angles in this one but it, it is used to a f reasonably understandable effect it doesn't feel like it's mm -hmm. just there for you know dutch angles sake yeah uh, so yeah so this is the thing uh he, he's questioning you know what is this who do i believe and brother jerome tells him about how he found the devil and that the staff of truth is what keeps him locked up where he got the staff of truth why he knows it's this mystical staff i mean these are all interesting questions that we don't have time for, for another <laughs> twilight zone yeah but he basically pretends that he believes him and he wakes up middle of the night and he steals the key off the the sort of the the, the guard it might be just his roommate who's looking after him but 
Mr. Lady's guard, and sneaks over to the cell, lets him out, but as soon as he does, as soon as he does, uh, the guy who was in there, who's been pretending to be just a helpless victim, uh, just holds up his hand, and all of a sudden, we get the Dutch angles again, and he gets kind of, you know, icky, and he falls down, and it's, it's almost like the devil's just made him collapse. Uh, <laughs> which, I guess, is interesting, because it almost implies, in a weird way, that that's kind of what drew him here in the first place. But by, by giving mm-hmm. the same effect to how he falls down in the camera, it connects it right. to how he was falling down earlier. So maybe I'm reaching here, but it almost implies that in some way, that even though he's trapped in there, the but devil's he was influence. Drawn to it. Yeah. That, like, that, that even the illness he was feeling was because he was in the, the vicinity. The devil's kind of latched right. onto him and drew him in. I don't know. It's like the one ring. It's no accident that it's found. Sure. Was that a Lord of the Rings reference, Tara? Yeah, of course it was. <laughs> Just checking. I don't watch crap. Uh- <laughs> How dare you. <laughs> I, mean, I, I see what reviews you put up. You definitely watch crap. Oh, yeah, sure. I definitely watch crap. <laughs> I, 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 don't, don't poke holes in my joke. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, th- the fun part, though, is that when he gets out, uh, the, the devil that is uh, there's a sequence where it's very obviously they've got all these pillars in the foreground so he's walking past all these pillars and the camera's kind of tracking behind all these pillars as it's following him and every time we go past the pillar it's clear that they're actually cutting to a different shot they, you know, they've done this multiple times uh, mm-hmm. each time with more and more makeup and stuff because uh, as it goes past each pillar he becomes more like what you'd kind of think of a devil outfit slash you know he's got horns and uh i mean he's probably red we can't tell it's in black and white but <laughs> like you know and he's got a cape yeah. and a cloak and he's got the big His head collar gets, like pointier yeah uh and then he he does like a vampire thing at the end where he kind of like you know holds up the cloak and puff of smoke and it's like a bat flies out the window or something may not have been a bat i, I don't actually was a bat but in my head it felt like there should be a bat because that's what it looked like it looked like a, a right. old school vampire movie where the vampire turns into a bat uh, it really does like even the set piece does mm-hmm. he says he goes to some european town <laughs> or s- somewhere in europe it's kind of like a transylvania situation yeah because because uh, the, the old man says that this used to be an idyllic little town where everyone was happy and there was no corruption and the, the, then the, the devil arrived and just started mm-hmm. feeding the poor because the devil was, su- was too tempted it was such a wholesome place that the devil had to feed on everyone and be like, ah, you're all evil now. You're all fornicating out of wedlock and you're all doing all the evil things. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what does the Bible say is evil? Are they murdering each uh, other? It didn't say they were straight up murdering each other. It just said like, there was corruption. That's what he said. He said there was corruption. Oh, yeah. The true evil. Yes. Bureaucracy. Yeah. Yes. Red, red, well, red tape is the devil. You know what? I, I'm happy. I'm happy to say that. Uh oh, dear. Joe, you know, I can't think of bureaucracy without also thinking of Leslie Nope trying to defend bureaucracy. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. Just completely jumps to. Uh, honestly, I mean the episode. It's got a stylish look to it. You know, it kind of sticks out in that sense. Um, it's a little bit hokey. Uh, so that's kind of a thing. Uh, the ending, of course, is we come back to present day and we find out that because Ellington realised, of course, that he did le- let out the devil, right? He actually let out Satan. Um, he's been hunting Satan for decades. Because he, he says that because he let him out, that's why World War Two happened. <laughs> and that's why the Korean War happened. And then go to Vietnam, because obviously this was made in 1960, so it's not, we're not quite, <laughs> not quite in Vietnam yet. But... Uh, so he's finally captured them, right? And it turns out, because I will say the one thing I was genuinely disappointed about is that who he's telling the story to, it's just his maid. Who he's, he's, yeah. he, and he's just <laughs> explaining to her that under no circumstance can she open the door. He's got like a little miniature staff of hope that he's got as a yeah. lock. Where did <laughs> they get Christmas the... Christmas ornament version. Where did they get the miniature version? Why does it still have the power? <laughs> I, I don't know. Is it whittled from pieces of the previous staff of hope 
So here's my question though. He says that now he's captured him and he's got him locked in this room. He's going to he's got he's got to go to do some things for a little bit. He's he's making sure the maid won't open the door, and he says that I'm going to return to Brother Jerome so they can keep him you know keep him locked up again. And I'm like, wait a minute, right? We were five years from World War One, so that was what 1922. If my math is five years after World War One. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. 1914 to 1918. So, 23. So, it's 1923 in the main part of the story, right? Mm -hmm. And he says that there's been World War II in Korea, which means if it's not exactly present day at the time of the episode airing, it's at least in the 50s. So, how old's brother Jerome may be now? Because, like, he was already a pretty old dude <laughs> in 1923. <laughs> I'm just... 30 years have passed, like, at least. <laughs> like, what, what age is this dude now? Yeah, but he looks very biblical, so maybe he's like uh, Methuselah or something. Who, who's the one who lives for like 800 years? Don't ask me Bible questions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Bible questions. <laughs> they all lived for like an average of 200 or something in the Bible. Poppycock. No, and then... <laughs> are you calling the Bible Poppycock? <laughs> I'll call it much worse if you keep asking me questions. <laughs> <laughs> Poppycock. Yeah. Um, I think so. I don't know. I only read the Old Testament in college because I was forced to for a class. But they, I think they all lived like way, way, way longer. Mm -hmm. It's one of our punishments for being so sinful now. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. Nothing too bad. Uh, of course, the very end, though, after he leaves... The final moment is the the maid unlocking the door, and we get a cool effect where the door opens and it's the stars, and it's like uh, you know you know the Serling comes in and says it's the Twilight Zone, blah blah blah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I mean that, that final little moment's cool, uh, and yeah, I, you know what? I was kind of expecting maybe a little bit more than what we got here, just based on the uh, the rating on MDB, because I, I noticed it kind of spiked up the average rating, and I was like, oh okay, all right, really. Uh, yeah, this was like an eight point six versus like a six point something from last episode, and what? Yeah, that is high. And I was like, and I think I genuinely enjoyed the last one, you know, the machines one, more than yeah. apparently the internet does. And I, I think I enjoy this one less than apparently <laughs> that the internet does. It was super goofy. Yeah, but it wasn't like it wasn't like the fever or anything. Surprisingly, yeah. it was fun, goofy. I was into it. Yeah. Uh, whereas this one, I think, has some cool stuff. The style is cool, and the sets yeah. are cool, but but I, I don't uh, think it's a knock it's out of right. the park. Yeah, it's just, it's fine. It's fine. I like the shooting style. It's a it got a cool ending. Um, <laughs> where I appreciate it just really went for it. So now he's the devil. We're gonna have him look like the devil. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't remember the devil howling. Um, in my readings of him. But... <laughs> well, that's, the, that's the one. We didn't even mention why it's called the Hurley Mice because he howls occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> that's the only thing I remember reading about. But um, did you think it was going to be a werewolf? Yeah, well, I even... Said, I cried... There's no man in, that we have trapped. Well, it's I can't... Wolfman. I cracked that joke last week when we read the title for the next one. I said, "Yeah, I said like, it's a werewolf story then, because it's the Hurley Man. <laughs> like, what else maybe would it they be? wanted to make a werewolf, but they couldn't, so they made a <laughs> made a devil instead." Well, I love the idea that they actually wrote the script under that guy. It was a werewolf, and they tried to make a werewolf costume, and went, this looks like shit. <laughs> like, we're gonna have to scrap the whole thing and start over. <laughs> what can we do? We can have some <laughs> horns and a little goatee. Ah, okay, there you go. <laughs> you don't think someone would be like? Come on, we had a we had a monster that was a talking <laughs> slots machine. Certainly we can <laughs> pull this off. <laughs> yeah, but say what you want. The slot machine looked like a real slot machine at least. It's true, yeah. Yeah. Well it didn't at least sound like at, at least uh circa the time period. I mean admittedly I've never seen one from the, that time period in person, so you know, slot machines in the present day look very I don't different. I think they've aged too much except they're digital now. So Rod Sally comes out uh, at the end. Well, actually, I tell a lie. He, he. Well, actually, before before we talk about Rod Sally at the end, actually, let's talk about him at the start. He just kind of like superimposes on top of the image, like he's not actually there. He kind of pops in on top of it, as if he's green screened, which I thought, yeah. which I thought was kind of probably like rear projection or something, right? Yeah, possibly. Yeah, uh, I do. I do wonder. Uh, why didn't just have him like on a part of the set? I, I guess it's just where they were shooting. Maybe they were shooting away from their usual location, and he couldn't. But get... he's been doing that all season. 
Well, no, but he's been actually in the set for some of them, though, right? Where he's been, you know, walk in front of them. Is it this? Where is this film? Uh, maybe I we've seen him more like in the in the end, like walking around saying, mm. "Here's the set for next week, and join us with blank blank stars I mean, in blank episode." I mean, maybe he's just been <laughs> Stuff like that. maybe he's been put in in post and all the other ones as well, and I've just not noticed as much because this one he actually popped in. They actually had him just appear in the middle. Mm-hmm. He didn't walk in. He, you know, he popped in in the middle. I thought that was a, a little bit strange, but anyway. So at the end of the episode, he teases the next one, of course. Uh, and as soon as I saw the title for this one uh, last time, when I was looking at the episodes, I knew what one this was. This is a pretty big episode. Uh, I'll, I'll just say it's one of my favorites from the ones I've seen. So I'm looking forward to next week because next week is Eye of the Beholder, uh, yeah. and this has him just sort of like playing with some bandages on someone's face, and uh, that's basically it. it just teases it. You know, mm-hmm. we're going to take the bandages off and see what happens next week. So, uh, I know this one well. Yeah, it's a good one. It is a good one. It's a very good one. Uh, so we can no. use a good one. We could. It's just, yeah, it's been kind of a mixed batch recently. So uh, it's nice to know that we do have some great still to come. Uh, they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're spread throughout the show. It's not like they're all the good ones that were at the start and it's just nothing but crap left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess if you have thirty six episodes in a season. <laughs> Yes, yes, you can't keep it up all the time. That's true. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what's coming next time. So, by all means, uh, let us know what you thought of this episode in the in the comments below. You can like and subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on the, the Twitters at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. And if you want to support the show, you can do that by rating the podcast and Apple Podcasts. And you can also, of course, support us financially. How can you do that, Tara? You can check out our Patreon page. It's patreon.com slash TV. You can donate as little as a dollar per month, and that gets you bonus episodes of other shows we do, like The Ace, which is our science fiction movie review show. So check it out. Thank you very much for joining us once again, uh, and we'll see you next time. So keep watching TV, guys, in the Twilight Zone.